Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Good morning, good morning. My name is Andrea Simintov, and you are listening to Pull Up a Chair on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Okay, um, today's show, I was just asked what today's show is about, and I think that we have a recurring theme. The theme is what we can do. Last week we talked about a burning world while heaven weeps, and it's not just a theme of a show, it's a theme of our lives, and we're going to explore um, changing the world, one person, one child, one prayer, and one decision at a time. So I do want to say, I know that we have listening right now from the U.S. It is late there. Boker Tov, Eretz Israel. Good morning. Good night, Canada. We have people up very early in the U.K., Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Austria, and Nepal. That's exciting. All right. The chat room is open. Drop me a note. Let me know that you're listening in and tell me where you're listening in from. Um, one other thing before we go to start the show, I do want to kind of uh, clean up last week's a little old matter, and that is I said anybody can drop me a note and ask me to send them either references, links from some of the material I use. Um, so I just want you to know, Todd, I heard your request. Hannah, I heard your request. And please, God, before Shabbos, I plan to send you what you asked for. Both of you asked for um, the Charlie Chaplin messages for life. It was a wonderful, wonderful piece. I enjoyed it. Um, Let's see. One other thing you should know is I just came out of my second, my third, my fifth quarantine. Israel, we were a little smug. Oh, Israel, we were a little bit ahead of the curve, ahead of the world. We are underneath. We are undergoing a terrible resurgence of COVID-19. And this disease is indeed not showing any sign of abating. So everybody, wear your masks. Uh, I took it off for the show. And I will see you on the other side. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. chair on israelnewstalkradio.com. Write to me. Write to me. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know where you're from, what some of your thoughts are, and what you are doing. You can reach me at andrea at israelnewstalkradio.com. Yes, the streets are still burning. Yes, talking about defunding police. Yes, talking about the lives that matter, some lives supposedly mattering more than others. I want to tell you about a life that mattered. And I want to tell you that every one of us can make certain that the legacy, the message, the holiness that are, is in our hands is ours to leave behind. 
received a shocking message this week. Someone I knew, knew a little bit, knew his older brother better. His name was Jay. And it's a story that everyone listening in, I believe, somehow can hook into. This was a life that mattered. He was a man. He was a father. But this is where we fall to our knees and genuflect. He was a teacher, an after-school tutor, a mentor. I couldn't read all of the tributes to my high school acquaintance, Jay. I couldn't read them because they hurt. Because I got it. Because there were so many because I felt a little bit like a voyeur. But I'll tell you one thing. I knew that not being part of his chosen orbit meant that I had lost something. So I want to tell you the story on one leg, as we say. He was a product of the American dream, a good home, good family, three children, probably a pet or two. I don't really know tree-lined streets, college education. And he did what so many of us in the middle class do. He became an accountant and he succeeded. He acquired homes, cars, the correct wife, an ultimate divorce. So many of us really follow these patterns. He dated, perhaps he went to an occasional religious service, maybe not, it didn't matter. Jay, like so many of us, marched lockstep into and with a value system. You know the one, the one that guarantees that he who dies with the most toys wins. And then I came to understand from hearing bits and pieces of the story, along came 9-11. 911 do we need more than to say just those numbers it all came crashing down it was more than anyone could make fit could fit into any narrative that we'd been talk and been, we'd been taught getting a little speech impediment here 911 was so ugly so monstrous so unfathomable and Kilroy Plony Almoni John Doe Indeed, Jay, who up until then might have been unrecognizable from so many other suited and bank accounted lockstep marchers. You know what happened to him? He got woke. And you know what he did? He quit. He hung up his suit. And he went back to school to become a high school math teacher. He wanted to wake up to a morning with meaning, to a day that he mattered, to possibly being a tool of change, of eye-opening, putting his own teaspoon of passion and caring and goodness into this world. From what I understand, he began an internship. Uh, He went back to school and he began an internship working with inner city children. You know the ones. Yeah, you know the ones. The ones off the academic grids. The ones who supposedly have their futures already written out, those negative, sad, marching, deprived futures. And he changed it. He took a job at Long Beach High School, Long Beach. Long Beach, New York, and he met a lovely woman, too young, many said. She was also the daughter of a respected educator. And suddenly, for the first time, this guy who's almost my age became the father to several children. He coached, he mentored, and his house was filled, filled with children marching in and out from other families who wanted to learn more and be better. This week, Jay died. He had contracted an illness several years ago, and his really his health was not what it should have been. You wouldn't have known from seeing the pictures, 
boy, oh boy, was he vibrant on Facebook, alive, happy. Never saw an accountant looking that good. And he was in the hospital awaiting a non-life-threatening heart procedure and just died. This is what heroes are made of. Making decisions that will make the world better, not words, action. My friends, we are nothing without good people, without heroes who make critical and sometimes unpopular decisions. Last week at the end of the program, we talked about why the blessing of the Kohen is done with his hands. Because it's one thing to use your mouth and say, I'm going to make a change. Be well. If you need anything, let me know. There's something else. When you stretch out your hand and you physicalize the holiness of your heart. So let's stop lying to ourselves and deciding that our lives are so damn valuable because we just march lockstep with spewed messages. Today is the day. Today is the day to say, what do I believe in? How can I make it better? Today's the day to hang up the suit and get your hands dirty. I look at this man, Jay, who doesn't know who I am, would have to work hard to remember. But I must believe that his life today changes my life. His life changes your life. He's changed the lives of so many by merely living his truth. And his truth was consistent with holiness and goodness and making the world better. One last thing before we go on to, no, we're not going to do ugliness today. Mm -mm -mm. Had a great conversation with a friend yesterday, and we decided that today was all about hugging, loving, and goodness. One thing I must tell you, at the funeral, which of course was live streamed because nobody can even get into each other's orbits and hold each other and hug each other anymore, his brother said that when he spoke with him on Saturday, he had no idea that it would be the last time they would speak And his brother merely said, I wish I would have told him how much I loved him. I wish I would have told him. I myself am listening to that. I'm making my list today of people I need to tell. They mean something to me in my life. People I need to say. You make me laugh. You've made me richer. I want to do better because of you. My life has been good because you have been in that. Don't wait, friends. Do you love someone? Today is the day. Make it one person. Make it three people. Call them. Write to them. Skype them. Tweet them. Has someone made a difference in your life? That teacher? That priest? That rabbi? Don't use your discomforts. I'm not that kind of person. I don't say that kind of stuff. Mm -mm. Exercise those muscles, the muscles of outreach. The world is a little poorer today because Jay is gone. How many of us will fill in the blank, will take up his rallying cry, hang up the suit and say, We don't need another lawyer, don't need another accountant. That's not to disparage lawyers or accountants. Uh, We need some of them. But just because mommy and daddy says, that's what we do. You need to make a good living? No. 
boys and girls, we need to make a good life. Okay, before we go to break, talking about lockstep, I need to say something here. We want to keep it upbeat. Black lives matter. Jewish lives matter. White lives matter. And when we come back, I need to talk to you about the platform of Black Lives Matter. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar? She's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. Okay, we're back. Um, <laughs> okay, we got cut off. So, um, really, what the hell is she talking about? Anyway, I'm drowning, drowning in notes this week, drowning in notes, telling me what we're supposed to ignore and the ultimate message, what we're supposed to rise above, that if you're not for them, you're against them. My goodness, my goodness. None of us have to be bullied into marching lockstep with an organization, an organization that has an ugly campaign, an ugly history of anti-Jewish, anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel rhetoric because, because today's message is a more important message. You know, it's okay to sit this one out. It doesn't mean that the dialogue stops. It doesn't mean that we don't wring our hands over the Shabbos table and say something has to give, something has to change. When a child cannot walk out of his house in the streets of Detroit or in the streets of Sederot down south in Israel, cannot be safe on the streets of Brooklyn or in California, Something has to change. Many of us who grew up in 1950s and 1960s America, we remember the police were holy. The police could do no wrong. The police were our friends. Sadly, in so many ways, that narrative has to be challenged. There have been a number of articles written by Jews, because they all come to me, of course, they all say, where's Andrea? <laughs> Hello, this one's for you, babe. Um, that this is the, not the time to worry about the anti-Israel platform of Black Lives Matter, because solidarity with blacks over the murder of George Floyd is far more important. Don't take this show out of context and say that that's what I said. I'm telling you what, what the vibe is. But when a rabbi in New York Jewish Week writes, Jews need to support black people, BDS or no, because, well, first they came for the blacks and I did nothing. That's cute. But it's not the fact. Years ago, and I'm off script now, years ago, the first and apparently the last black mayor of New York City, David Dinkins, during the Crown Heights riot, made a statement. His statement was so blatantly racist, and he got away with it as a black man. So many blacks were offended. He said, let them get it out of his system. Let them get it out of their systems. Let them run riot. It was over the murder. They had murdered yeshiva student Yankel Rosenberg. 
I believe, who is part of a motorcade of the Rebbe Lubavitch that accidentally hit a black child and killed him on the streets of Crown Heights. And Mayor Dinkins said, let them run riot. Let them get it out of their systems. And so many black leaders and black middle class and black parents raising boys and girls to be world contributors were so deeply offended by that statement. What, are we not held accountable? Are our... Are we just such products of passion that we can't be reasoned with, that we can't lock arms and protest with dignity and clarity? No, we have to get it out of our systems. And it was pointed out at that time that had any white mayor uttered those lines, he would have been correctly tarred, feathered, and run out of town. We need to support each other. We need to support each other on the side of correctness. It's not a race that we cross the finish line. It's a process. Anybody who studies science is a chemist, is a researcher, is looking for the cure for COVID-19 knows that the challenge is not getting the answer. An important challenge. But the work isn't done. It's parsing. The Torah itself, my friends, is made of wood and parchment. It is not made of 14 karat gold, silk and stone. It is porous. It is vibrant. It is called Torah Gamish, the flexible Torah. And what do we learn? We learn that the process is everything. It doesn't get over. It absorbs the tears, the sweat, the perfumes of this generation and the next. I say the same thing. Don't use Israel and love of Israel as an excuse to step out of the discussion, to pull away from the narrative. My friends, black lives do matter, but it cannot be condoned, must not be excused, must not be allowed to get it out of their systems as long as they practice bigotry. And if it means sitting it out and saying, I don't know enough, I need to learn more. Remember the three most important words in the English language? I don't know. It means wait. It's okay. It's good craft, good skill to build. Now, cleverly, and I have an update on this, it appears that the pro-BDS platform, you know, um, boycott, divest, and sanction against anything Israeli, anything Jewish. It's an anti-Jewish movement. Don't get locked up behind the word Zionist. It has been removed from the web pages of Black Lives Matters and the Movement for Black Lives. Okay, this anti-Semitic, virulent, disgusting, letting you know what they think about you. It's been removed cleverly. I I don't know when it happened. Um, They still, I think we're waiting. I will let you know when the full platform is published. But the new one suddenly, which I'm sure... You know, Palestine has so much to do with the looting in the streets of L.A., but um, has says nothing about Israel or Palestinians. Okay, so if indeed they really pull away and throw up their arms and say we reject the BDS platform, then the entire argument is indeed moot. But I also know that you can still find it. Um, They have addendums that you can go into on their websites referring to Israel as an apartheid state and, um, you know, and uh, also there's something hashtag we are all Muslim. What does that have to do with it? Okay, let's see. So that is that. Again, know your stuff. Don't just lockstep. It's okay not to celebrate with under the banner of Black Lives 
matter. Speak at your Shabbos tables, speak in your community, speak online in the supermarket, okay? But do not stand with your gelled nails and parking your BMWs and your SUVs on the other street so no one accuses you of uh, still being protected by privilege and scream Black Lives Matter and hope you get a pass for not being those kind of people. Moo. 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 Silence also works when sitting in a classroom. Okay, let's see. We're running through here, running through here. Okay, yeah. And in the sense, well, I only have two minutes here. So I came across, somebody sent to me right before I went on the show, the Los Angeles pogrom that no Jewish organization will talk about. It's very inconvenient. So apparently... Um, during the riots, born of rage, born of hurt, born of anger, synagogues have been absolutely um, written on F Israel, Free Palestine, and the Rabbinical Council of America put out a play- press release describing uh, Floyd's death as murder, claiming to stand together. And uh, doing what we do, because Jews have always been, again, is it boring? We've always been on the front line fighting anti, you know, fighting bigotry. But now we know. Decency, self-respect. We are in the fray. Mordechai. We just had Purim. What was it, two months ago, three months ago, four months ago? I don't know. I have a quarantine ed. Mordechai tells Esther. Esther. If you remain silent now, salvation will come to the Jews from some other place. And you and your father's house will perish. So many generations ago, Jews faced genocide because one stubborn old sage refused refused to take his knee before a brutal dictator and abandon the aspirations of our people. People, don't march lockstep. Say, I'm with you, arm in arm, but look in my face. Look at who I am. Do not dismiss me in the name of your higher good we count we have what to offer the world and if you don't know what it is learn more be a teacher speak to you on the other side in a time where feelings have become fact where rational thought and common sense has disappeared. One man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Political Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American time, 7 a.m. Israeli time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. Okay, Andrea Semito back, IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, and uh, you are listening to Pull Up a Chair. You know, crazy, last section of the show. Ooh, it's getting ready for Holy Shabbos. A couple of things. First of all, I just wanted to tell you, I'm supposed to be doing this whole Devar Torah thing, but I must share with you, I participated in a Zoom talk um, in a Zoom meeting last night, I didn't participate. I sat like a latke listening in, and uh, there were about a hundred of us, 
all of us have, um, well, some of them were the residents, but most of us listening in have elderly parents living in a um, is a residential facility. I think my husband yelled at me, said, don't say facility. Uh, <laughs> in Rockville, Maryland. And I got to tell you, I began the program talking about Holy J who hung up his suit and hung up his, <laughs> hung up his cars and hung up and became a humble world changing teacher. Oh, I genuinely like I fall to my knees and I would say on par with teachers, with nurses, with EMTs, are indeed anybody working in elder care. These people were patient. It was a wonderful, it was what they call a town meeting at my mother's uh, place, my mother's home. And these people, I mean, with the patients and talking about what more could they do for their elderly residents. I really felt very humble. I felt ready to do the show, babe. Okay. This week, the best post, (laughs) the best Facebook post of the week, my award. Let's do the drum roll. Goes to, once again, Zahava Elglard Shapiro, who is fearless. I want to be her when I grow up. She wrote, I think sometime in the middle of the night, she doesn't sleep clearly. Quote, quote Zahava. A German official, you know, that we're all undergoing, you know, we're, we're all debating <laughs> that Trump peace plan. You know, more, some more outsiders determining our future for us. Okay. A German official is here in Israel to tell us where we can and cannot live. His name is Heiko Maas, and he's on an insidious mission skulking behind the respectable title of Minister of Foreign Affairs. In Germany's, we're still quoting the Holy Zahava. In Germany's overwhelming frustration at not succeeding to exterminate every last Jew during World War II, today that hell spawned country is the largest European financial contributor to Israel's enemies who seek our total destruction. And this German Dreck is now on Israeli soil warning us not to take any steps in extending our sovereign rule of of law over our own communities in our own land, lest we upset Germany and its EU accomplices. A not-so-veiled threat from a German official who no doubt is just following orders. Zahava Englard, Shapiro, you get a coupon for a free pre- a free pizza and eyebrow cleaning. Okay. Best, best quote of the week. Devar Torah section. Ah, pulling over. Ah, actually, Engage employed my husband to help me with this one because I love it. First of all, oh, let me just look here. So um, it is a different, we're doing the Parshas according to Israel. Okay, we have a different Parsha this week. So this week, hold on, I want to open up this. Somebody just wrote to me. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll send you that piece, okay? T, I'll send you the piece. All right. This week's Parsha is Shalach, Shalach, Shalach Lecha. The fundamental issue raised in this week's Parsha is... Again, how many wise, pious leaders of Israel made such a fundamental error in vision and judgment and indeed condemned themselves and their constituents to death. All the commentators from the Torah and the Midrash on forward cannot get over this Parsha. This is the Parsha of the spies. Remember the spies? A lot of theories. Um, about leadership. So according to Rabbi Wine, Rabbi Beryl Wine, he brings down that, you know, we can't leave without, we can't live without leadership and direction, opinion and advice. Remember, it's opinion and advice. But we have to be aware that human beings, by definition, are not prophetic. We're not all-knowing. Actually, Jewish women indeed know the future. (laughs) Do that. Do that and you'll hear from me. But um, 
we don't have just blind trust because we know what's going to happen. A very important lesson that appears here in this week's Parsha, this week's Torah uh, section, is that majority opinion is not always the correct one. Kalav and Yehoshua, what is it, Joshua and Caleb, we're going to use the Hebrew word names, they dissented from their colleagues. The Jewish people disregarded their words and they followed the overwhelming majority verdict regarding the land of Israel. The strength of the survival of Jewish people throughout the ages has always been in our argumentative ability to dissent from majority opinions and indeed from ruling cultures. Cultures change. Opinions shift over time, over circumstance. But what makes that por- that porous Torah of wood and parchment, but it's ironclad letters that cannot chip, lest it become completely pasul, completely useless. God's word doesn't waver. Democracy represents the will of the majority, but even democracy is not completely infallible on crucial issues. You know, the question arises as to why Moshe, Moses, who was able to convince Israel to leave Egypt, not not easy, march through the desert, not easy, accept the yoke of Torah, not so sure, reject a golden calf, build in the middle of the desert heat the tabernacle. He's unable to convince them of the importance of the land of Israel to their physical and spiritual development. Anybody who has listened to this show knows My bottom line is, why aren't you working on coming home? Well, the harsh truth is, and I know, I have family there. I have friends there. I still have respected Rebbe's and Rebbitsons who taught me, informed me, guided me in how to raise my children. Still there. And the fact is that most Jews find it easier and more comfortable to live under a foreign rule than to build their own self-governing society and nation, and certainly in a neighborhood as difficult as ours. We still have this moo exile mentality that was already formed in our Egyptian experience DNA. The Jewish state, a place of refuge, escaping persecution. I got to tell you something. There's a lot going on here. It's a challenge. We're not done. It's a work in progress. It shouldn't be viewed, though, as a haven for the helpless, a place to bury your loved ones. It's a country that has been designed, built, prophesied to fulfill its role as a light unto the rest of humankind. And believe me, we hold each other's feet to the fire. The Torah of Moshe has to convince us of our true role in the world. You know, throughout Jewish history, we're coming up soon on Tisha B'Av. I'm going to race through this. Um, The destruction of both temples. Well, so many disastrous things happened. The obvious question is, what did the Jewish people do so terrible that night of the night of the spies that our destiny was forever altered? The sin of the spies for which we're still being punished today, it comes down to one word. One word. And the word is Ephes. Nevertheless. Hold on one second. Here, Ronnie. Yeah, my husband found it for me in the Parsha. How be it? It's sort of like reset, recalibrate. Let us go up and conquer the land, they say. They came back with a report. It's a land of milk, honey, beautiful abundance but they were saying the inhabitants are kind of creepy the inhabitants are scary and what did the spies do they over explained they went beyond god's word they rejected the divine promise there's no way to restore integrity other than to return 
You know, the Jews today share this very same sin. The spies went la tour to spy on the land, and we go on tour to visit Israel. We come back and we say, oh, it's so good, such good food, the falafel, it's really great. But you know what? We can't live there because there's such hostility between the Jews and the Arabs. The economy is terrible. We don't have what it takes to make Aliyah. There are dangers involved in securing Israel. We find comfort in staying. Every one of us witnessed the exodus. We witnessed the ingathering of Jews from Ethiopia, from Russia, from Bukhara. But are we still lacking in faith? Returning to the land? Are we ready to hang up our figurative suits and do what is right? Perhaps on Shabbos, discuss what a land of milk and honey and values means to you and your Shabbat Shalom Mivorach from Jerusalem. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from Leak City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Doris from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 